hello guys it's your boy habib educate and in today's video i'm going to share with you how i nearly got kidnapped last year exactly in december but it was early december and late december i traveled you know out of ghana to pay a visit to my dad who stays in you know Cote d'Ivoire, just a neighboring country with ghana without wasting my time let's dive into it all right welcome guys if this is your first time on the channel kindly like subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that whenever i do videos like this you'll be the first person to be notified but before i proceed on to how it started and how it ended with the process or what i went through how i nearly got kidnapped by these kidnappers or i don't know the name to call them right in accra ghana so i also want to take this opportunity to thank you all for subscribing and being part of this happy tourist family i really appreciate and you can see right deep into my eyes that this video is getting me emotional because whenever i'm alone mostly i'm not the type who likes going out a lot mostly i'm indoor minding my own business that's if i get a work then i'm busy working when there's no work i'm indoor a lot of people who met me before maybe in school or in the community they know the kind of person i am then that's just by the way so i really appreciate you guys we shot our 100th video and the subscription was growing up right from facebook to whatsapp to twitter and instagram i really appreciate everyone especially tiktok because i also have a lot of friends there so please be part of the family help support the boy but i don't want to talk much how did he start as i said i'm i'm emotional guys <sighs> i woke up one fateful morning and i thought i was the happiest person on earth that day 2022 hasn't been that easy 20 right from 2020 to 2022 was one of the difficult almost difficult years that i've experienced though 2022 is not yet ended i woke up one fateful morning and it was in the month of december last year early december because a day before that day i had a phone call from my dad who said he has not met us since he left us when we were young very young and traveled to go and hustle in Cote d'Ivoire and that's where he's been since more than 30 years if I may say so he was there when the war also started we were there with him before we left and came you know we left the country for security reason now he told me he wanted to come and pay a visit to him because he has not seen us for more than 15 years and thereabouts so i was here with my younger brother that was in ghana and we were based in dodoa at our you know some of our family members place when i had this call and he said he would send us money so that we'll book a ticket and come and pay a visit to him in december I was very happy and as i told you i was one of the happiest person on earth that day so after the call he sent the money through bank you know account so mostly in dodoa here we don't have the branch so i have to you know travel to medina and go and withdraw the money through one of the banks where i save i went to withdraw the money that morning and after that i took advantage of that day to pay a visit to one of one of my fathers okay i paid a visit to him at ablikuma and there is one too at lakeside you know around butchi they did so well to me and i really appreciate may god bless them in whatever they are doing so after that you know i went and withdraw the money pay a visit to him and he also gave me some you know thousand safer I came and added up to my dad's money and went and booked the ticket and i remember that was it was a friday i booked the tickets 
at Seiko. We took a bus, not an aeroplane. So after that, me coming back, it was late. You know, after going through my rounds and things, you know, it was late and it was around seven getting to eight. Now I was at the station waiting for a car or a bus, you know, to come back home in Dodoa. But I couldn't find one because that was a busy day. And you, if you know, you are in Ghana and you remember, whenever it's December, cars are very busy. So I waited. Whilst I was waiting, you know, I saw an old man who approached me with his bag and started begging me that he wants me to direct him to a place. He doesn't know the place. The person is one of his relatives. He's a traveler. And me... As a soft-hearted person, you know, sometimes we are too good to people. And I think it's about time we try to be harsh or a bit harder. Me pitying this old man and trying to help him, though I don't know the place, but I remember there was, you know, a shop that he was describing. I knew that shop. So I told him that person stays here, but I don't really know where, you know, his house is. So this old man said he's a traveler. He has a lot of money in his bag, but... For security reason, he's afraid maybe someone will come and cross him and steal that money and, you know, other things. So I pity and I was trying to protect this old man. Though I don't know, you know, that's how arrogant I was too. I don't know. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below if what I did was right or it was, you know, foolishness. So trying to protect this man with his own money in the bag so that he will be safe and no one will fraud him because i knew life in accra and how it is because i've been there before we are all street boys bro so after that another man just pretended but it was later that i knew that it was a planting another man pretended he was crossing the road and the old man stopped him and said he wants a one of the guy's house, he, he did not know the place, the guy is his relative, and the new guy who was trying to cross the road said he knew the place, but he should come and let's go. So this old man said, he's afraid, he doesn't want to go alone, but he begs me, I should come and accompany him, so that he will be safe with his money. So I realized something, while we were going, the two of them took the lead. You know, the old man who doesn't know the place or who is a stranger, he's supposed to be with me while we walk together. But he was with the other guy and they were talking and they were walking and small time they would turn and watch back. As I was walking, following them, I was having some, you know, there was a lot going through my mind. I was kind of felt like, am I safe? This is, you know, a fraud. These are kidnappers and other stuff. But I was trying to still be good. So I ended up following them. Can you imagine, if you've been to Medina before, there is this overhead close to the market. You know, you can pass under that overhead and enter the market. And mostly we have Dodua cars that park there. That's where we were and they took me into the market. I was also following them because though it was late, it was just a few people in the market and we're passing through this dark. But I thank everything and I give everything to God. So I was still following them. We reach a place, whenever we reach places where there are a lot of people, then they, they try to rush and they will not talk. Whenever we reach dark places, they will be talking and be moving slowly while I was behind them. And at that time, the money I went and withdraw was still in my bag. I followed them until I met a guy. He was sitting, it was a Muslim, you know, community where they were sitting and he was in his jalabia with the abuta beside them. So he shouted, hey guy, where are you going to? And I said, I'm going to accompany this old man who is a stranger, you know, to a place. And he said, do you know him? I decided not to mind. Not that I was trying to be, you know, arrogant there or bossy. No, I didn't know what was going through me at that time. It's like something was controlling me, guys. He shouted for the second time, hey, young guy. I said, what are you going to? And I turned and looked at him and I was like, this old man said I should go and accompany him. Do you know him? I said, no. He said, then you are following him. Hurry up, go back if you want to leave. And at that time, I just felt some coldness. And, you know, you see all the goosebumps, you know, rising. And I was like, what the hell? What is going on? I didn't know these people and I'm following them. So there, I just quickly came back into my senses. It was as if they were controlling me. And the moment this young man shouted on me and uh, directed me to go back, I saw these old two people, you know, started rushing and running. 
guys i think it's god not that i think it is god or else i wouldn't have been here this december so i use this opportunity to thank god and you guys should be safe out there and i pray that may god or allah protect you wherever you are and alhamdulillah i'm still alive and there is more to come the moment we are not yet dead meaning there's a lot ahead and inshallah we are going to achieve it and this you know to, is to some of my subscribers who don't know that i'm a muslim yeah i'm a muslim but in ghana muslims christians traditionalists will live together no grudge and that's one special thing that you can get in ghana ghana though there's a lot of you know racism but when it comes to religion we just live like families so I took this advantage to appreciate you guys out there also for supporting the channel and I have this message you should be careful because in December a lot of people want money so that's where fraudsters and hackers invade the system and try to do their things and also kidnappers are there so beware of kidnappers I think I have to leave it here thank you all and I'm still Habib educate a lot of people don't know my full name but i'll mention that let's see when i get thousand subscribers and that's those who know me knows me habib educate and i leave you in peace i'll see you in the next video salam